Okay, now I'm off. All right, sorry. Because I need to make phone seriously like, if I'm too loud, just tell me I'm going to turn it off. Oh, you need it for the video, right? I'm also doing this whole new Susie Orman thing where I wave my hand wildly all the time. It's really <laughs> aggravating. Uh, okay. So I call this site map to, the site map to success, and I talked about this in Chicago recently, and everyone thought it was really brilliant, and it's totally not. But it is interesting for developers, and here's why. How websites are born. So the world of web development divides out into two camps. You're either a web designer or a web developer, generally, right? And you guys all consider yourselves serious hackers and blah, blah, blah. But the reality is that there's a chasm in between those two fields. You know, nobody's a webmaster anymore. That's at least a good thing. So how web developers think, they think about functionality. Everything is very technical. You're just going to wave me in a direction, and that's fine, and I'll try to pay attention. No, you're good. Oh, good. OK, thumbs up. Developers think very technically. They put everything into nice, neat categories, and that's awesome. And then designers think the way that designers do. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. But they come from a completely different place. The problem with thinking like a developer, which is functionality, or thinking like a designer is that Really, neither are terrifically effective. Developers think, again, nice, neat columns. How is everything going to lay out? Developers or designers, you know, how is it going to look? The problem is that everybody out there is selling something. Every single website is selling something. I don't care if you have a blog where you're selling your opinion. I don't care if you're selling widgets or you're a nonprofit trying to get donations. You wouldn't be on the web if you weren't selling something. And by the way, if you're not selling something and can't figure out what it is, well, you know, it's really congested out there. Get the hell off the internet, you know? <laughs> we need the bandwidth. So <clears throat> you gotta figure out what you're selling, and then you have to do it well, right? If you're on the internet to sell something, better that you be effective at it than suck at it. Although some of you probably enjoy that. So the first question that I walk through with people is, what do you do? And it seems overly simplistic, right? What do you do? But what, what do you do? Stand up, tell everybody what you do. No, no. Uh, Turn around. If I had a blog, perhaps just rattle about something that I hope somebody reads about it. <laughs> Bing, we reached the bottom floor. Sit down. <laughs> Anybody else? You have 15 seconds to tell me what you do. Anybody? Can anybody in this room do it? Well, what I want my site no, to no, do, no. Oh, what I want my uh, site to do is to find clients for lawyers, and I'll make a referral to that lawyer. That would be pretty succinct. So you walk away from talking with this person. If I walk up to you in an elevator, you know, it's an elevator pitch. Everyone's heard of the elevator pitch. You get into an elevator, somebody says, oh, hi, nice pin. What do you do? And you have an answer for them. And it's important that they walk away with enough information to know what it is you actually do and how they can help you in your endeavor. So that was pretty good, you know, and the next thing you would want to follow up with is, you know, probably you wouldn't need of a lawyer or, or a referral or whatever. So how do you actually figure out what you do? Let's say that you're Superman, right? What would Superman say he does, right? He can make a whole lot of statements. He could say, I'm Superman, great. That means nothing to most people, right? What does that mean? Uh, it's all, they could be witty about it, and a lot of people are in their tagline, and yet it doesn't help people understand what it is that they do. Or he could say, I'm the dude that's going to save your ass. That's awesome, but could you be more specific? How, when, where, what do I need to do to engage your ass-saving services? <laughs> so there are a whole lot of questions that we leave unanswered. This is Superman's statement. This is what he does. Right? That answers all of your questions. If you walked up to him and he said, hey, I'm Superman, and said this, you would get complete sense of who he is and what he does. And we're going to use Superman as a case study for the rest of the evening. <laughs> so what do you do? This is the exercise that I walk through with companies and nonprofits. In order to figure it out, we take out the big whiteboard, and we go through this. To whom? Whom are you servicing? You know, what do you provide to what goal through what means? And you sit down, and you write it out, and you look for synonyms. You haul into, you know, that ancient thing called a thesaurus in the dictionary. You look for good words. Because some words are going to fit better than others. Dude, these slides are already available. Stop writing everything down. And <laughs> look at that. 20 heads just picked up. That's <laughs> awesome. I feel really such power. Um, OK, so seriously, these slides are like already ready. I'll, you can pull them all back. Um, you know, if you can figure out what these words are and you find succinct ones, you're already on your path. I look at mission statements all the time that are a page long. That's bullshit, guys. It should be a sentence. You can get it down to a sentence. If not, you're not doing your job. 
we revisit mission statements all the time because they're just too long, too verbose. People feel like it's it's their official statement, so it needs to be overly. It's not. What do you do? That's all it needs to be. Once you figure out what you do, in order to site map a website, the first thing I do is take out a big piece of paper and say, who is going to visit your website? So again, we're talking about Superman. Who's going to visit? Uh, here are a bunch of potential people that could visit your website. Um, potential customers and clients versus return customers. They're two different groups. Suppliers, potential suppliers, press, wholesalers, staff, and let's not forget a very important group. So you want to treat every single one of them, you know, every single one of them absolutely differently, right? And this is going to change based on who you are. So for Superman, we have potential clients, return clients, government agencies, press, concerned citizens, rival superheroes, career day organizers, friends and families, and competitors, villains. Okay. So now we have this group, and this is going to be different for every single one of you. You're going to have a different list of people who are going to visit your website. Now we're going to visit what I like to call success points. Everybody who comes to your website, you have a goal for them. You don't know it yet, but you should. If you're doing it right, you have a goal for them. That goal is probably different for each group that's going to visit your website. And even though it's going to be slightly different which groups there are per your website, they're not that different, believe it or not. You know, universally, you want press to come, you want customers to come, you want providers to come, things like that. So let's map across this piece of paper and define success points for each of these groups. So potential clients, we want them to request help. Return clients, set up a corporate account. You know, um, concerned citizens may want to donate. Um, you know, friends and family probably just need a blog to follow along with. So we define it for every single group. What is that success point? Now all we need to do is map the in between. How do we get people there? create what I like to call a path to buy. How are we going to get them there? Now, if you're sitting down with somebody and they ask you what you do and you explain it to them, you already have in mind, if you're doing your job right, what you want to sell them, right? And if you're sitting with them face to face, you know what you need to say to get them to buy your product. And again, this can be an opinion, this can be a nonprofit that you're donating to. You know what you need to say to them in person. And yet, we get online and we like, we're the king of 800 pages and like, you know, 3,000 word, you know, ep you know, epics. It's not effective to getting people to buy what you're selling. So, but you want to think about what you would say in person and have that sort of conversational messaging as you go along. It works in person, it will work online. It will be more effective online than what you're currently doing. Here are what I like to call the four questions. We should ask these at Passover instead. So, <laughs> universally, I don't care what you're selling. I'm convinced that these are the questions that people should answer. Why do I want, you know, why do I want the general topic? You know, if you're selling widgets, why do I want widgets? Why do I even need widgets? Okay, why do I want your widgets, specifically? Um, all right, let's say I'm convinced, I want the widgets, I'm sold, what's the process to get them? And then, okay, done, give me the widgets. These are, to me, absolutely doesn't matter what you're selling, I am convinced these are the four questions that you need to answer along every single path. So now we map the in between, right? It looks really, really complicated. I generally do it on a piece of paper or a whiteboard, and this is exactly what it looks like. And let's just go through a couple of them, right? Potential clients. If you're Superman's potential client, why do I even need help to begin with? Okay, why do I need your help? Because Batman's across the street and dude looks hot in suit. Okay, and then how does your help work? I'm sold. How am I going to contract with you? How does that work? And now you get, okay, I'm at a request page. I need help. I accept the help, move on. Um, you know, return clients. We want them to do a corporate account sign up. What are the features and benefits? Why do I need a corporate account? You know, what is the process? And what I want to show here is that sometimes you don't need four separate pages to answer these questions. You can answer them in less pages. Um, you know, concerned citizens. Why citizens need superheroes? How Superman helps Gotham? Originally was Gotham. I know it's Metropolis. I've corrected it in one slide. I apologize. Whoops. How, how, uh, how Superman Foundation uses funds and go to a, a donate button. So you go through the entire thing and you map this out and it will seem overly complicated, right? And when you get done, you go, whoop, that was great. Okay, so now in order to make this a cohesive site map, you need to find the overlaps. And now, suddenly, when you look at this, you start to see how there are different pages that might actually do the same thing. 
you know, why do I need help is probably the same as why you should subcontract help, why citizens need superheroes, super, you know, it's, it, that's the same page. So as you find these, as you, as you find these overlaps, you realize that you're starting to simplify this site map. You can send people through the same page and then shoot them down different paths. And when you get it really simplified, this is what it looks like. You're retitling it, but you know what information needs to live on every single page. So when we talk about menus, um, the menu options that you generally see are what? About, um, services, they're our not, team. pardon me? Our team. Our, I love our team. Oh, and my favorite, testimonials. Whatever, anyway, so. <laughs> they didn't make contact us. Right, so, but they're, they're pretty basic. Everybody uses the same damn site map, the same menu items, right? And my question is, how effective is that? Are those the questions that people are actually asking? And it comes down to this question. In every website that you create, you need to ask yourself, am I presenting information the way that I want to give it, or am I presenting information the way that people want to receive it? There is a massive distinction between the two things. And that distinction is what separates web marketers from designers and developers. It's the chasm in the middle. So if you start thinking about websites this way, you're going to start to find that they become more effective. So when you get... Well, so, so, so wouldn't your approach then argue for, for the navigation at the top be based on the user, type of users? So there's four types of users. Like, let's assume you've got customers, right. you've got suppliers, you've got... Um, Not necessarily. Employees. I'm going to show you how. Right. Because I think you can address all those people in a home page with a call out in various ways. I'm going to show you some examples too. But I do think that the menu addresses everybody, and people don't inherently know I'm a potential customer. You know, again, because the first question is, why should I give a crap about widgets? So you need to get them there before they know that they're a potential customer, right? So these are generally, but I mean, on some level, these menu items answer a lot of those questions. So we talk about the home page, and on the home page, we're going to have, am I out of range? No, you're moving. Okay. <laughs> it's very important we get the you. Um, you have the marketing messaging, and now we're going to do call-outs for each of those groups. Return clients. So this is the home page. So we're going to create those call-outs on the home page. Now, what do you mean by call-out? Uh, we're going to come up with a graphic or a, a line of text or a, a bullet point, something that's going to specifically talk to that group to bring them in. And it may be different depending on the group. You know. And, and do you, so, so let's assume you have like four little boxes. You know, okay. Yeah, you know, whatever. Right. And that's kind of like integrated onto your home page. You think that's more effective than having it the navigation? Because my eye always goes towards the navigation. Well, it's an interesting it, point because everybody's eye does that according to studies. Your eye travels across the page in an F pattern. Um, yeah, which okay. F, which is different from print because on print they travel in a Z pattern. Okay. Right. So actually, you do. we know a lot of things from studies that have been done in UX and UI. So, so basically, it's this. And then down, and then this, right. and then down. It's actually more like doo doo, but yeah, but okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. okay, so we're gonna use some call outs right now. We're not even worried about design. You're already at the design stage. We're not. We're not even talking about it. We're gonna talk about design last. So, but just so the point that I'm trying to make here is just this: is that we've now taken what was a very complicated site map and kind of boiled it down to its essence. And in choosing these menu items, I want it to be the questions that you think people are going to ask. And again, taking people down that, why do I care? Why does it matter? Things like that. Sometimes you go to websites and it's like a dog store and you think it's adorable to have menu items, you know, the water bowl and the crate, you know, whatever. I hate that because it's not effective. It should make sense. But on the other hand, going the other route to about, contact us, whatever, I also think does not help. It does, I mean, people are inherently used to that so they know where to find information sometimes. You know, sometimes it's not helpful. So, I mean, taking people down a path like this does help, I think. So, um, you know, so what you have is we've broken it out. Here's your about page, basically. Here's, you know, your process page. You know, this is for your individual groups. Talks about process. Here are the services and the contact, which is basically your, your completion point in many cases. And then, you know, for the, 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 the superheroes union, we have a hidden, you know, uh, union page. And then for the villains, we have a screw you page. So for those who don't need to be on the menu item, we're going to take them there from the call-outs. Come on, every website has to have a screw you page. Come on. Okay. So now that we've, we're not a designer, remember, we're just site mapping. So now that we've done that, we have to figure out the next important and highly critical step for both designers and developers. What's copy and what's a graphic? These are really important distinctions because developers, again, it's text as far as the eye can see. 
developers go, boy, it would be great if we did this entire header as an animated GIF. Yeah, so we need to come up with an in-between. And more importantly, because we're using WordPress, we need to establish what can be accomplished by a plugin. We need to start to be intelligent about what we know about plugins and functionality. And what can be accomplished in the sidebar, right? So we've got all these things that we want to do. Sometimes they don't need to be pages. And a great example of that is testimonial pages. Every time I see a testimonial page, I just want to like shoot the computer. Because you have this path to buy, right? And you're taking people off the path to buy to read your testimonials. So a testimonial, in my opinion, is best served in a sidebar because it's just massaging people on route, right? Um, there are a lot of things like that. So <clears throat> what is missing from that giant sitemap is what I like to call pictures of cute puppies. The cute puppies are missing because you always have clients who go, you know what, though? I need you to make sure that you have room for this picture I have of my dogs because people love my dogs. Yet nobody gives a crap. That's, again, you always got to go back to who gives a crap. It's not helping anybody buy your stuff. So anything extraneous, wouldn't it be cool if like the page opened up and a flower bloomed? Nobody cares. It's not selling your product. Think in terms of what's going to move people to your product. And again, I believe in organic content, all of that, but you're still trying to sell a message on your website or your client's website in your guys' case. So <clears throat> again, what's missing from that sitemap? An about me page because nobody gives a crap. <laughs> they really don't. They want to know about you. They don't need a whole page. They need to know so much as to not go to somebody else. So an about me section in a sidebar is awesome. Or serve that content amidst your other copy. You should be talking not about like, here's me and here are our services, but how you perform those services. That's going to be, I mean, every time I say this, somebody goes, well, people really need to trust me and know who I am. You're right. You can do that throughout the rest of your copy and talk about how you do these services, how you perform, how they're going to contact you. You should be in your entire copy. You should be everywhere. But I don't think you need an about me page. At best, you need a little about me in the sidebar. It's totally fine in my opinion. I know, it's just crazy talk. Um, again, testimonials, cute puppies, vague, unhelpful titles, picture and video pages, just like testimonials, right? You have a whole page for pictures. You're taking people off your path to buy. We have great widgets now. Throw in that sidebar, the same thing for video. And while we're at it, you don't need all that video, you don't need all those pictures. Think about what is convincing people to buy. You know, if you're a restaurant and you are selling your food, integrate those pictures into your menu. If you are a restaurant, you should not have a PDF anywhere on your site. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that shit well, nuts. No, that that shit. And the big flash, <laughs> the big flash graphic. Right, flash sites. Yeah. Right, how is that useful? So you want to have a text-based menu with some images. I'll show you one. It's a little bit outdated, but it's fine. I mean, WordPress is perfectly set up for that kind of stuff, but why would you have your menu on one pages and picture of the food on another? How is that helpful? And I see all these videos with like, you know, people are not going to watch all these videos. I know you don't believe me. You're just going to have to instill some faith in me. I'm right. You're wrong. I'm smarter than you. They're not going to watch the videos. All right, we're done. <laughs> All right, this is my next controversial topic, advertising. It's not on there. So we all just went through an exercise deciding what we do. Who here sells advertising for a living? Didn't think so. Keep the advertising off your website. It makes me money. It pays for my web hosting. Bullshit. If you're doing your job right, what you do, doing it well on your website, will make you money. If you have advertising on your website, it is take the whole point of website advertising is to take people off your website. If you're doing it, they're leaving you and spending the money someplace else. I can't understand the logic of that. Where is advertising meant to be? On places where advertising is the revenue model, like newspapers, news sites, things like that. They're not there selling content. They're there to sell advertising. That's the whole point of a television station or a newspaper. It's fine there. But like, I talk to nonprofits, and they're like, well, but the advertising underwrites the website. I'm like, your entire job is to get money from people to underwrite your nonprofit. And you're sending them someplace else for 20 bucks a month. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. So I'm a firm believer of decide what you're doing and kick the advertising off. I know. I'm sure. Um, so roadblocks. So <clears throat> a roadblock is 
you must fill out this form in order to see my pricing. Right. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. A roadblock yes. is, <laughs> you must walk through this tour yes. or see this advertisement in order to see what's on the next page. You must do X in order to get Y. I don't believe that's helping you. You know, um, I just, I don't think it is. And again, these are all personal opinions. And at some point, someone here is going to go, by the way, where does SEO fall into this? SEO is crap. It's a game. If you have good content and you're doing your job right, you will get people on your website. I don't do anything to undermine SEO. I've got great SEO plugins. I use them, which I love. Why would SEO? You put an SEO plugin on and you see they've never filled in a single title, title or description <laughs> on a single post anywhere. It's like the meat. You know, it only you know, it comes when you cook the gravy, but you have to put it in the oven first. Yes? So it's not necessarily a wrong plot. This is my favorite question because there's always somebody who's like, all right, but let me just explain. Go ahead. No, I'm explaining that right now I've got the contact form. Right. Is there a better way to have someone not have to use that? Because I'd like to be able to have them just be able, like, I just like to have like contact just with my person. Right. That's cool when I need it. I'm like, that's cool. I need to talk to someone. Right. And you end up talking to Rashish somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I could have totally been on hold through this entire time. Rashish? In India. Yeah, you can see the Google Voice widget on your page. That's when right. you click on There are a variety of options, but and, and but we should. Okay, that's a really good point. So there are a variety of options. One I like is you know you can have a, a Twitter widget there, so it twitters you because my DMs spawn me anywhere. You can have. Uh, there's a company out in California that does. My pet peeve is no phone. It just pisses me off. Right. I, I send an email. But why? But who cares? Why does it bother you? Well, because businesses are there to service you. Well, the thing is, okay, I've stumbled across their site. For some reason, right. I, I got there. God knows how, right? Okay, and so I'm, I'm starting out skeptical. I'm becoming less skeptical. I finally cross that line. Okay, I'm going to actually, you know, extend myself and, and reach out. And if I fill in a form, I'm going to get something back you know, 18 years later. Right. I'm going to be dead by then, right? But with, with a phone <laughs> call, I got a chance of actually getting the person on the How bad do you need the widget? <laughs> well, I mean, most people... No, you're right, yeah. but it's, it's an excellent point. I mean, I do think you need to have the phone number. I think your contact information should be on every single page. It's not one of these, like, hiding in a page thing. Every single page. And it needs to be text and not an image. You people don't need to hear that. You know that already. But, like... I love it when like the number rotates around a telephone in flash because that's going to make people no, it's not. <laughs> so all right so yes you want the phone number but you make a good point I like live chat I think it you know when it, when you're when you're on it I mean you know a lot of what I do with companies is talk about process I can build it are you going to sustain it you know are you going to have somebody sitting at the computer to answer live I mean but Google Voice it Skype Google Voice and there are a million ways to do it there's a plugin from a place out in California that I can't remember the name of but I'll try to find it I'm lying right now but whatever. Um, there are a number of places that do stuff like that that are answering because they forward calls. So why can't you send yourself on? Feel free, you should. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I mean, if I'm being honest, I have myself. I run a very limited. I mean, I barely have a website, so it's fine for me. But if if do you do you have children or a wife? Would no. you like to keep that? Okay. <laughs> All right. Just saying. So you know, it, it's a thought. Yes. I'm still saying. There's a restaurant in the theater district that has the coolest flash animation I've ever seen. I took that link, I forwarded it to a bunch of people, and we went out to dinner because of that like that was a deciding factor. Clearly, you were so, looking at it on your iPhone. I think it's kind of hard because it looks so awesome on an iPad. It was like what cool. they're having the show. No, that, that's fair. Look, I love flash. I love flash. I still build flash websites because I have stubborn clients, and once in a while I go, I feel like you know I'm I'm a glutton. So sure, let's have a vine climb up a tree, and surely that will make people want to buy your jewelry. Why not? Um, I love flash, but it's <clears throat> terrible. It's terrible, terrible, terrible. And ninety percent of what you make in flash, you can accomplish in WordPress via Ajax, JavaScript, things like that. I mean, like the most common thing I see in, in Flash is people have done like a, they've hacked a image slider. I mean, that's the thing I see most commonly. And it's like, God, there are just 80 different ways you could accomplish that without using any Flash. Just, you know, wake up. So. But I'm just saying it can be a selling point. It's not necessarily I think it can. I mean, perhaps in a very what limited your application. Is. Like, I, I have a client who makes fairy crowns for weddings. I think the Flash is working really well for her. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in any other app, really no last fair. I mean, there's a fairy crown market out there. <laughs> <laughs> people. Nice. 
I mean, come on. Um, I think it works for her. I think it's a very limited application. I do. And like, here's the point, for instance, right? And this is the whole point of this, right? You like, here's what I hate about SEO is like you design for SEO, right? And you get people to your website, and then once once they're there, what then? What then? If you're not giving them good content as opposed to SEO content, they're not sticking around. You went to that website, but you didn't go back because of the website. You went back. I don't know if you went back, but if you did, it was because they had good food or there, there was another reason. Once you got to the website, you may have gone, that's really cool, but if it was hard to get to the menu, you might have gone, screw, screw this, we're going someplace else. I mean, there's a benefit to having something more easily searchable, readable, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not saying that it never works, but you're making a huge trade-off. I don't know how you found that website, but they made it 100 times harder for themselves to be found by search engines to begin with by having a Flash website. Well, I think what she's saying is the Flash was extraordinary. I mean, we see Flash every day in a big deal. That one really, really And so, good. do we want to see the website? We totally want to see the website, right? <laughs> I have my iPad. You can see it here. <laughs> it might be Mistral. I can't remember the French restaurant in the theater district. We'll look it up. Okay. All right. But, uh, okay. But so, we all get roadblocks bad, right? Okay, so what is actually there? Okay, and this is important too. Fewer pages, right? I mean, I think we're all so damn happy to be able to create pages on the fly now that a couple of things. We use pages where we should probably be using posts and archives, right? Um, and we just like pretty pages. We're like, it's just so freaking easy. And then it makes that nice little sub drop down menu. That's just awesome, right? Everyone's just overly happy with the drop down menu. So you have fewer pages, less copy. People don't want to read your crap. I know that's a really harsh thing to say, but they don't. You don't even want to read it. I mean, you know, you don't. People want to know what the deal is and move on with their lives, you know? So, right. Uh, if you can take any copy and iconicize it, make it into graphs, visualizations, that is good. Um, bullet points, call outs, like my favorite thing is to have the quote be a really nice write a line, big font call out. Looks lovely. Um, Clear branding, definitely. Um, again, going back to what we know from UX and UI, people expect to see that logo in the upper left-hand corner, and they expect for it to link to your damn homepage. So if it doesn't, or your logo's like, oh, it would be great if it were right on, stop doing that. That's just annoying. I'm gonna come to you down and like, you know, whatever. Um, calls to action. So you have all this great copy, but like so often, what I find is that you really don't have a clear call to action, and you need one on every single page. Here's what I love. Click here. Um, we actually know from studies that like, you know, buttons that actually say, get your free trial versus click here to sign up, you know, it rises dramatically. Got to thank the lovely folks at 37.6 for that, right? So uh, clear calls to action. Like, what am I supposed to do next? And now that you're trying to shoot people down these paths to buy, you really know where you want to send them next, right? If you're this person, go here. If you're that person, go there. Want to find out more about our services? Click here. Think you might be in peril in a dark alley soon? Click here, right? So we know what we want to do with them. Um, okay, so, right, this is still WordPress, so we have to think about how WordPress plays into this, right? The sidebars are really essential. Sidebars you know, start to play a really important conversation because they serve content alongside your path to buy. Videos, pictures, testimonials about me. We talked about all of that. Um, your footers as well. Your footers are, are footers are a great way to store information. I love them for testimonials, for video. I mean, they're great. Again, it's just another dynamic sidebar, right? Um, you want to be sure that you're using so your title. What? Can you differentiate the, the header or the nav, the nav bar, the top from the footer? What should be? Which one should be on top? Which one should be on bottom? Well, the footer would go at the bottom. No, no, I meant that. What, 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 no, no. Um, but actually, I want to change so my footer's at the top, just to confuse you. Um, what should be in the footer? What should be in the... Header? Yeah. Okay. I like images in the header. And No, I'm kidding. Um, so the header really, I mean, uh, I think people overthink the header thing. I think it's your logo, and it's a really strong thesis statement. Who I am. As far as I'm concerned, you don't need anything else. Honestly, so you know, I, I a nice picture header fine, but like these things where you see the headers, they take up half the page. Everything above the fold is gone. I love web designers, really. Um, <laughs> crap, get rid of it. I mean, you, that's valuable space, and it's not convincing anybody to buy anything, right? It's not sending them anywhere. So, uh, really, logo, really strong tagline, piece of statement, something like that. To me, that works really well. Um, and you know, and again, your title and description, 
use those for your really strong, here's what I actually do. And then, you know, your title is your blog, you know all of that, right? Um, whoops. So in the footer? In the footer? Uh, I think it depends. I mean, there, I mean, the footer is one of those areas where it falls to SEO people on a large degree. People reiterate their their, their pages and their, their categories. And like that's what I mean. Where I, I, don't, I don't like undermine SEO. I'm just not going out of my way for it. So that's the kind of stuff that could go there. Um, you know, I think a very short contact form would be lovely in a footer. Right? Or, you know, here are the various ways to contact me. Like, what I like about footers is you have your pages, right? And that's one way people get to the information. A lot of times I find myself on pages going, God, I could have called this something else entirely, right? So maybe I reiterate all that in the footer, but I call them the other, you know, again, it's a reiteration. A fact, an FAQ, could be called an FAQ. People know what it is, but you could call it answers. Or you could, why we work the way we do. So, I mean, you could call it a million different things, and it's going to appeal to different people. So you can use that to reiterate that in your in your footer. Um, okay, author display. Um, newer frameworks, things like Genesis 2010, they have author display on all of the posts. Love it! Because it also gives you the opportunity to input some information from their profile. So as opposed to saying, I love long walks on the beach, I occasionally try to knit, and I have a new nephew named Morris. Nobody gives a shit. What they care about is, you know, your, your basic, here's what I do, and here's why you want to read my stuff and your gravatar is sitting right there, and it goes to the bottom of all of your posts. It's what I love about things like Genesis in 2010, and that's relatively new. Um, dynamic content gallery, we just talked about Flash, everyone wants a slider, great, why would you use DCG? I mean, it just makes so much more sense. It's a jQuery Ajax slider, it pulls from all your posts, it's incredibly functional. If you already use featured content slider, this is like 800 times better, so use that instead. Love gravity forms, because unlike other forms, Plugins. This actually gives you multiple options on display and formatting, and it's just better. Gravity, what? Gravity forms. It's it's a it's a premium form plugin. It's like forty five bucks, but uh, it, it like creates forms incredibly easily. It's like drag and drop. It's it's. So it's a specific plugin for WordPress. Yes, it's okay. a work. It's plugin for WordPress. It just makes forms. Kick ass forms. You can do file upload, you can do drop downs, you can do 800 different forms in eight minutes. It's great. And then here's my favorite, and I've never seen anybody talk about this quotations plugin. And it's actually called uh, Quotes Collection, is the name of the plugin. And instead of having a testimonials page, you use this for your testimonials, and it's Ajax. So it, I'm going to show you examples, but it just refreshes it. Instead of refreshing the page, you can actually scroll through your testimonials without ever leaving the page. So it's great for a sidebar. Quotes collection. Quotes collection. Okay. So we've done all of this work, right? And this is a whole process. We haven't designed a bloody thing, right? You know, but we've done all this work. Now we have the website up. And what good are these paths to buy unless we actually measure them, right? What can we use to measure analytics on a website? <laughs> oh. You've obviously done this before. <laughs> What's the problem with Google Analytics? Anyone? Anyone? There are no tickets involved anymore. What's the problem with Google Analytics? It was designed by monkeys. Was that what you were going to say? Because <laughs> that was right. Yes. Okay. I don't know what they're smoking in the UX department over at the Goog, but like, it's good shit. Because this is an impossible to understand website, which is why nobody uses analytics effectively. I am convinced. And I've been to Google, and by the way, there was no weird aroma in the air, but there is a back room there where they are smoking this stuff. I'm telling you. Because um, like AdWords is very similar, right? It's obviously designed by the same cokehead. So, okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so I'm going to walk you through how to set up funnels and goals in Google Analytics, which you all have seen and gone, boy, it would be great if I spent, you know, like six or seven hours one day trying to set that up, but I have a life to lead, right? Okay, so you set up your website. There's a 400-page book on how to use Google Analytics. Was it written by Google? Because I wouldn't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so you set up your website in Google Analytics. This is the dev track. I'm not showing any of you how to do that, because if you don't know, then get out. Um, okay, so in addition, you know, you have, uh, when you go to your profile settings for that particular website, you see this, goals. It's very, you know, that it's goals. We're going to go for goals. 
Um, you see right here, add goal. I mean, it's actually not that complicated. It's just hard to find everything, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna call this goal government agencies. I wanna track government agencies along their path. Is it an active goal? No, set it up and then don't use it. Uh, goal <laughs> position, you know, set one goal, one fine. Um, the goal type, URL destination, that's the type of goal we're setting because you could actually make it pages, right? but we're not doing that. We're taking them on a path, we want to do the path. Um, you know, match type, do a head match. Uh, uh, goal URL, in this case, is gonna be the contact page. So that's the URL that we're headed for, contact. Uh, goal value really doesn't make like, a difference. Goal funnel, money shop, people, here it is. These are the URLs down here that you want people to travel along to get to your goal. So, and then you click save goal, it's very easy, right? And then it's gonna show you all of your goal overview um, when you click into analytics. Okay, so this is just total common sense, right? You've looked at Google Analytics before, you understand bounce rates, right? Somebody comes to your website, they don't spend any time, they don't get anywhere else, they're bouncing off your website, that page sucks, go back, do it again. If you take people down the funnel, if you take people down this goal path and they're dropping out somewhere, there's something wrong with that page. So here was an example I gave somebody uh, earlier today. Uh, you have a form for new clients. They should fill out this form before you contact them so you know their medical history. Because now you, you got a roadblock and you got, right, anyway, so. But you look and you notice that people are, are, are going into the form, so your call out on the home page is working, but they're dropping out on page two of the form. What can we surmise from this information? The form is too long, the form is too long. So you know to go back, revisit it. Mm -hmm. What if you have three out of four goals where people are at least hitting the goal path and on the fourth goal, you have like zero penetration. 2% of people are clicking on it. What could we surmise? Your call out is not working, fix it. Um, I mean, you know, as you, as you see people where they're dropping out, you know where you can go back and fix it. I mean, this is incredibly, you know, you're, you're really nailing down exactly what your website works and doesn't work. It's work to do this, absolutely. But what you are resulted with is an incredibly effective website. Whether you're running an animal shelter, and I seriously go through this, when I do an animal shelter website, to a sushi restaurant, to a nonprofit, to a blog. This could apply to all of them. Because the goal on all of them is to make somebody buy what you're selling. I'm totally Susie Orman. It's like becoming really bad. Puppies. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so here's my other favorite tool, the, the Google URL Builder. And I'm always surprised at how many people don't know that this exists, but it's a free Google tool, much easier to use than analytics. You go in here, you just set up your URL, you add a whole bunch of meta information, it gives you a really long ass URL that you can input anywhere, like say Twitter or Facebook or somewhere in your site or in your email campaigns, and it will help you track in analytics where people are coming from. So to be specific, if you're using whatever email program that you're using to send out your missives, right? Constant contact, whatever. And you have your copy on your left and you have your images on the right. I actually create specific links from here for clicked image versus clicked text, clicked header image, clicked footer image. It's all the same link, but now I can actually differentiate in a way that constant contact won't tell me where they clicked in the email. Again, I think you might be assuming that some people, so there is, what I surmise about what you just said is that it creates something as JavaScript or some some kind of thing? No, just a really long. It's just a really really long. Okay, link. so, so it, it it first goes to Google, keeps track of okay that came from X, and and then writes it to the database and then takes you to the URL. No, nope. it just actually it, it goes through Google Analytics, it takes you right to the site. It just adds it. Here I'll show you what okay, it so does. So it just passes information then. Yeah. Okay. It's it's actually really really simple. Sure. So let's go to. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, it's not actually it. It's a screenshot. screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's not working! DEI. All right, we'll, we'll go back and I will show you how it works. But all it does is it just adds like plus, plus. it just adds metadata to your URL. It's a really long URL. But I mean, you know, it's, it's incredibly effective for tracking things like that. Um, I was going to say something about the email. Oh, anybody know what the most often clicked link in any email is? Any email by any provider done anywhere by almost 50% more? Free. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 sale. A sale. Every, web, every email you send out, I mean, unless you don't sell something, but should have, if you can, you should have a sale banner at the bottom in red. 
and everybody will click on it and discount things by two to three cents, I don't care. But people will always, they don't tend to buy things in the sale category. Here's what's interesting. But it funnels them back to your website by almost 50 to 60% more than any other link that they will click in your entire website. You can spend a lot of time building really beautiful header images in your email marketing and it doesn't do crap. Sad, isn't it? Mm putting those designers out of business by the minute. All right, step eight, get paid, right? That's like the easy part. So that's it. I want to show you a couple of, of just case studies. This was a website. Somebody came to me and said, help. Actually, they didn't even say help, if I'm being fair. They just said, put it in WordPress. <laughs> and I said, let's talk about it first. Uh, um, you know, she had some very specific requirements. But like at a basic level, let's look. What are the problems with this website? of pages along the top, not a, tons of copy, not a real clear path of what do I do here, and also why the hell do I even need an adoption consultant, right? Like that should be step one. I'm already paying a lot for an adoption. Do I need a consultant? Really? That seems like a bullshit, you know, enterprise. But it really isn't. I mean, this is like a really effective thing. So now we need to communicate that. So when we redo it, we make it look a little bit, you know, better. But we also, what is the first thing that you see? You see a very clear statement, right? This is what we do. And that was actually a slider and there were a couple of different messages. Um, you have you know, your logo in the upper left, you've reiterated the logo in the bottom right. Again, we've got pages that we've reiterated. These are just different paths to those pages in the footer. Testimonial widget, uh, you know, this is actually a sign up, one of these, oh, sign up for more information widget, but it's not a big sign up for my email. It actually has some information. And then here, what makes the adoption consultancy different from other services? Not click here to go to the next page, right? So we've got some, I don't know why I was looking at you, it wasn't like specific. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I actually did the previous one, but Great! Right. Um, it was, the pink and blue was, it was lovely. I love the fact that on the, on the first one you couldn't even read like that. Yeah. Right, and actually she found this too jarring. She thought it was too severe for, for adoptive parents and we ended up softening it to the point that it looked really horrible exactly like the first one. But that's not your interview. Um, if you look at the menu options up here, do you really need help? Why choose us? I mean, do you really need a consultant? Why you should use us as a consultant? How we work, um, you know, our pricing, and now, you know, contact us to sign up. So, in other words, we don't have separate pricing pages and now buy pages. Right and buy the pricing. It. Click here to buy it. We're, we're, we're ready. So, and, you know, again, on the inside, What's important about this is like she had an ebook, which I know everyone wants, right? An ebook um, um, that she wanted people to download. We visualized it, uh, and then we also said, you know, she said people like to, you know, when you learn about your clients, we learn that the fathers never come to this site. The wives always print out the site, the entire site, and give it to their husbands. I said, well, let's make a PDF version of it that's actually friendly to read. And we visualize that here. Download it. So it's servicing the client, but we don't really need a whole page for that. Just along the route, somebody goes, oh, yeah, I need my husband or whatever. So here's the video. Learn more about the person who runs it, right? Because we don't need a whole page for that because nobody really gives a rat's ass. Here's your testimonials and how I can help you in your journey. It's just stuff to massage you on route. If one thing Wait. I don't I don't like about the video, I hate videos. The video should always show the image that you're starting with. It, it, it generally would, to be perfectly oh, honest, right. this is a mock-up. Yeah. But um, no, I actually prefer the videos where people walk onto the website. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> 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 I like it when you're on a website and somebody walks and goes, Hi, are you here? <laughs> 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 the person who invented that technology should die a million horrible deaths. And, and like, it shouldn't just be one death. It should be like a million of them. And every web designer everywhere should get to invent one horrible death that they should have to go through. <laughs> I'm suggesting bees and some sort of sticky <laughs> concoction. I thought you said you didn't like video at all though. Right? You're no, no, no. I like video. I just don't think a lot of video, and, and I don't like flash. Flash is different. But I do like videos. I think in this case it can help. People want to see her and get it, and you know, they're, they're going to give her a lot of money and she's also going to help them on a very personal thing. I actually thought a video was a really nice way to serve, you know, who she is versus you know, a long page, oh, I met my husband and caught, no one cares. So this is like a one, it's like a 90 second video. It's very short, it's very succinct. And I think it works really well in this application. What I don't think works really well is like a whole page of videos. I don't think anybody ever watches them. Edit, we suck at editing. As people, we are terrible editors, but it's what we have to learn. Um, and the guy who walks on the website, I mean, do you know through testing that that's not effective? 
No, because I generally just want to strangle my. No, yeah, uh, no, I, I don't know. Right, no, I have no idea. I would just never tolerate it. I mean, there's a certain point where you stop looking at testing and you just go as a rational human being. Yeah, but who's your audience? Oh, I don't like you. We'll talk again after. <laughs> no, 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 for, no, for, for example, okay, I, I had this long session with a guy who's really, really good today about the websites, right? And he said, okay, for this, you, we, we looked at like 50 law firm websites. These are people going to the bottom half of the educational spectrum. Right? These people are high school or, or, or below, right? So your clients serve the white trash element. Okay. <laughs> no, we think that those are the people that get in the car crashes, those people that, you know, get the bad operations. <laughs> No, no, but just empirically, that's where. Do you also have like discount coupons? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's a free representation. It's all. So yes. Do you fix problems? The point of this guy was making was that <laughs> every one of these law firms right. that, that's going after this high school educated population. Right has a corporate looking site the way we wrote some great ones. Now that's really interesting because of course then people assume that they're more expensive and so they don't go to that. You said you want something look, that looks like Toys R Us or something. <laughs> well, no, I don't well, think Well, it could be not Toys R Us, but it, was, it shouldn't look like This conversation is a condescending at all. No, I disagree. You don't want a Toys R Us looking site, but I think that there is a danger in having your site, your materials, whatever look too expensive because then people assume that you're spending money on them and thus you must be expensive as well. Toys R Us is a strange. <laughs> no, what, what I've just was, seen the, what's the giraffe from Toys R Us? Do you need legal representation? The point of this is, is that the Rosie Gray site is well designed for a client who wants to drink, which is very educated. You know, but for, for a person who's just been in a car crash, that's not the right approach. <laughs> they're already seeing stars, now they're going to see giraffes. I get it, I get it, yeah. Okay. No, uh, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're not, you yourself are not the average demographic of, you know, for, for most That is the nicest thing you've said <laughs> 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 Well, I'm just talking about the guy who walks on the thing. That should be effective for certain audiences. Well, perhaps they hurt their head and they can't read, or for other reasons, <laughs> certainly. How about you have a giraffe walk across? Moving on. Sadly moving on, really. This is another website for a pediatric clinic. Again, what comes across here? Why EDPs? Okay, now, find us, because you've already been you know, convinced. Our doctors are getting blah, blah, blah. Um, clear thesis statement and now we talk about these call-outs right in this case the call out to all the various groups is these is these boxes right very you know they're all different for each one and as you go through the pages they change so we could do some testing um, <clears throat> this is another one that's relatively old what's important about this is that clear um, clear clear statement right here testimonial widget down there here's another one clear, you know, clear statement right up at the top. That's it. So, um, Lucy's my Doberman. You knew that because it says Doberman. Anyways, and this is a joke amongst me and my friends. Anyways, um, so <laughs> exterior to your questions with the giraffe, which I would love to revisit. Let's, let's look at the website of the French restaurant because I'm dying to see that. And, um, and we were going to go through the Google <coughs> URL builder. Okay. Oh, this is actually, I, I just wanted to show you these couple of sites because I thought these were also some good implementations. So <clears throat> on this site, here's the author about the author. And then this is Dynamic Content Gallery, and it's right in the sidebar. Now, this site used to have, this is a woman on Cape Cod who, she eats something every day that she hunted or ran over or grew or whatever. And she used to have this like wacky calendar in the upper left hand corner that you know you could click on it was it was the archive widget, right? And you know, so if you wanted to see something, you had to click on it. No, nobody ever did it. We had not a single page view. But now she's visualizing them and the comments have gone way up because people can see the food and people click on images of food. We know that. Um, Here's another one. This is this is a mm -hmm. oh, let's look at dinner. Doo -doo -doo. Roadkill. 
<laughs> Not so much. Okay, here's a text-based menu with the image right there. That would be great. We should have gotten that instead of pizza, right? We need pizza for lunch. That's kind of, yes. Okay, that's literally it. What do you think is the name of the restaurant? I, I don't remember. But Best guess. guess. Just French Restaurant Theater District. It'll probably come up. And I, I have to say, I assumed it was Flash. It was a couple years ago. I assumed oh, it was Flash. <laughs> But it could have been, if you said there's a workaround <laughs> similar to five, it could have been. <laughs> district Boston, right? Pigal. Pigal. Where is it? Oh, Pigal. Okay. Ready? Oh, flash required. Oh. Ooh. And then if you go to the menus, it's, it's really cool, too. If you come. Where there are menus. menus. Oh, entree. Yes, the, entree. Now. <laughs> 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 well, but at least you know where it is, because you can see the surrounding <laughs> area. You know that it's the right building. Ooh, nice transition. So that is what we like to call an intro page. <laughs> this would totally make me go there. See? <laughs> and there used to be a woman walking. Ooh, I don't know if it's gone, but there was a really cool. Uh, it's going on. on I'm I want to go eat. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't want to. I do want to go over there, not to eat, but I at least want to go over there. All right. Yeah. Do they have a mobile uh, version of those rollovers? rollovers? Yeah. Well, they, I mean, it's beautiful, but no. I mean, what, what, is, what is this flower for? I'm dying to know. If I'm walking around the Happy street, hall. Oh, I can't hit return. How do I? Okay. Mm. Oh. There used to be another thing, too, that's gone, but. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, okay. So, owner, owners. Lim menu. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, to be fair, at least it's a PDF, and at least this is probably searchable, but, yeah. Here's what's really sad. You know they're charging you extra in the food to pay for this website, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my computer is dead, so the demonstration is coming to an end. Do you have any questions or just want to yell at me about the advertising thing? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wait, really? You have another question? <laughs> if you had a very complex site like Microsoft, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, they, they have a lot of constituency, it's a lot of information right. behind the per right. Would it make sense to kind of break it up into 10 different sites with 10 different domains? It, that would be terribly case specific. Here's my issue with Microsoft. Since it's, if we're going to talk about, about their website, and I know the person that designs the health website for Windows Genuine Advantage, and whenever I see her, I'm like, how have you not thrown yourself off the building yet? <laughs> 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 Like, I mean, what a miserable freaking job. Um, it's impossible to find anything. Even if you use the help menu and say, here is my error code, you, it's still, the filter on it is terrible. It takes hours yeah. to find it. Right, and, and, it, and there's nothing on the home page that just says, because why do people go to the Microsoft Help Center? Because something is forked. So it just should say, as soon as you get there, what's wrong? And like, it should have categories, and it should be a more intuitive filter. That's. If they just had that, that site would be 800 times better. Why? Because who's coming to the website? Not like, oh, I wonder if I should work with Microsoft. No, it's people whose sites are bored. So it should, I mean, that's it. That's, that's it. Those, that is the people. So it should be entirely geared towards them and making it easier. If they just did one study, just one survey. Anybody else? I just went to the Pigal website on my iPhone. Of course, it's blank. Right. <laughs> all, all that shows up is like the, the phone number. And I will, however, say this. I appreciate your bravery for stepping up and proposing the flash mm -hmm. website to all of us in the death track. That was great, lady. <laughs> you got balls. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, hey, go ahead. Uh, so you, you talk about headers and about uh, being above the fold. So right. if, if a header takes up so much of the space that it pretty much is. The, it's no longer a header. Yeah. Um, do you feel that that's it's effective in setting the mood for the rest of the website? It was just Who a waste, of, waste no. of real estate. What mood do you have to be in to buy something? Really? Like, what mood? If you go to a nonprofit site, I mean, like, here's my perfect example of that. Have you all seen these commercials for, uh, uh, like, the, the dogs and the cats, and it's like Sarah McLaughlin oh. in the background? Oh. Right? You just go, oh my god, I don't want to, I don't want to give you money, I want to kill yeah. myself. Yeah. Right? It's so not effective. You know, what would be, set a better mood? I don't know, just giving me the information. We need five dollars because five dollars will save this poor, pathetic kitten from having to listen to Sarah McLaughlin again, right? So, I mean, it would, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I sort of go, how much does the mood really help? I mean, you know, your website should not get you that excited. That's not good for you. I was going to say, uh, I stood at Kigali on, I have Froyo and the Flash, so it came up very well. You have Froyo? 
Yes, I Screw do. you. <laughs> I'm not being credible, and I'm like every day waiting. Update. I'm sorry. sorry. Don't hurt me. I just want to say it did come up. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's... because we don't have iPhones. We saw the Kool-Aid and we said, you take that Apple Kool-Aid away from us. <laughs> I salute you, sister. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Hey, her. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You, I'm sorry, you had a question? Oh, I heard you no, talking. No. Sorry, okay, somebody else. We don't have to raise hands. You can just, like, yeah. When, when you have a blog, uh, when you're not selling really a blog, you're just selling a plain blog. Well, you're not selling a blog. What is your blog about? Um, it's more of what I blog on is like generally. This is the point. Like when it, the point of starting a blog was keeping track of when instead of using a social website, actually keeping track of your friends and stuff like that. What I do with my blog. So it's basically like what you do every day. Right. I, what what you're selling is, is you are selling. What it is. I'm interesting enough that you want to stay friends with me. No, seriously, that's because if it's if the blog stops being interesting, <laughs> you're going to see it drop in your stack. But that's what you're selling. So you are, in fact, selling something. Mm -hmm. So um, the what I usually am stuck with is, you know, the slider kind of thing? The slider kind of things? Right. Like I, the I, 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 content gallery? Yeah. Uh, is it Look how scary he is. He's going to make fun of him. I'm not, you're good. <laughs> so is it a good idea or is it like, because most of the blogs don't have anything that just text. Well, clearly, I think that you should break text up with pictures, with callouts, with bolder text, with bullet points, with things to break up the eye line. And if what you're selling is, I'm interesting, I've got to say, good looking kid, put some pictures on there. <laughs> Can you see you on a motor scooter too? <laughs> <laughs> and it should be flash and it should go across the <laughs> And there should be a herd of giraffes in the road. <laughs> No, because if you do, if you follow my prescription, when they get to your home page, they're going to see that. I mean, people are not morons. They land on your page and it goes, hi, Bill Jones, thanks for coming to my website. That freaks the hell out of me. I'm like, <laughs> so what the, in fact, actually, we've done studies. Uh, you know, if you if you look into studies that people have done about semantic data, which is kind of what you're talking about, you go to a landing page and it knows your name and where you are. We actually can perfect that semantic data so much that people tend to be turned off by it because they assume you're spying on them, which on some level you kind of are. Mm -hmm. So if you talk to semantic web companies, some of them will tell you that they actually turn that filter down just not to scare the crap out of people. So here's my thought on. on I don't think you need them. I mean, it's stupid. People had landing pages for a variety of reasons in the past. One of the reasons was you put a coupon in the mail that says, go to myawesomewidgets.com slash mailer. And the way, so that they could measure the effectiveness of that bounce back coupon because the only people going to the mailer were the people from that friend. Because of the way that analytics work now, you don't necessarily need that anymore. You know, if you're putting something in the newspaper, okay, but how many people here are really doing newspaper advertising or magazine advertising or anything other than online advertising? So I don't think it's effective. And if you follow this prescription on the blank screen, um, you have call-outs on your home page, so that's going to funnel them from there. If anything, I would say you take them right to, if you know what group they are, skip the home page and take them right to page two on their particular goal. Look at yourself, wow. <laughs> Can you tell us more about what you do in your consulting practice? I tell people what they do. <coughs> well, for a living. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I, um, uh, it's actually, a, here's the sad thing. I have like barely a website. I have no business cards, and I'm really bad at my elevator pitch. And I even hired a writer to work on it at some point. Um, basically, I, I work in tech marketing, and I help companies figure out how to do stuff better. So sometimes they hire me to do a website, and it's about figuring, it's helping them figure out um, internal processes, external processes, how to make their website work better for them. But sometimes it's so much bigger than a website. It's, you don't even know what you're selling. You don't even know what your mission statement is. You know, you need to redo your entire lead dev department or, you know, people love it when I walk into a building, really. Um, you know, uh, stuff like that. You know, do, do they want to be involved in social media? Believe it or not, I don't believe everyone should be in social media. 
if you can't answer these two questions about a Facebook fan page, you and your clients need to be out of Facebook. If you have a fan page, what is the benefit to people becoming a fan or liking your fan page? What's the benefit to them? If people like your fan page, what is the benefit to your company? And if you can't give me a really good answer for both of those, Facebook is a waste of time as is Twitter and as is everything else. And I have plenty of companies, I'm visiting one on Wednesday in Vermont. We want to be on Facebook. Dude, you sell wholesale plaques. You don't need to be on Facebook. <laughs> right? it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not helping you, you're, you're good. It's, it's cool, skip the tweet, you're good. So, I mean, yeah, it's not for everybody and I think that's like the problem. Like we actually have all these studies now that show that there's really low ROI for companies on social media and I don't think that's necessarily true. I think the problem is that the numbers are skewed because a year ago everyone said, Holy shit, I'm not on Facebook! <laughs> and they hired social media experts who said, Oh, I can FBML your website, you know, your, your, your Facebook page within an inch of its life, and we'll run a promotion, and nobody cares. And they didn't really think about the plan and the strategy. So at base, I'm a strategist. I handle strategy and deployment. But mostly I just make snarky comments and tell people what they're doing wrong. And I come from a long line of Jewish New York women, and that has trained me and brought me to this point. <laughs> really? You have a follow-up to that? <laughs> follow Clearly! And you focus on technology companies? No. Um, I, I, well, I, I, it's tech marketing, it's websites. It's, oh, I see. Right. But I actually work with a range. I'm huge, I like small businesses and really big nonprofits. I have to say about the Facebook thing, that's interesting because I. My thing against Facebook is I personally think it's, it's a really annoying. It's a tacky interface, and I don't wouldn't want my business oh, yeah, associated with, with that. With that, to me, it's it's. I mean, I don't like. I see the, like the Versace website. To me, it's so tacky looking. I'm like, how can they be associated <laughs> oh, with on um, Facebook? Yeah. I mean, in <laughs> high. <laughs> no, I mean, I. I'm not going to feel that way. Serves a purpose. Right. And it serves a good purpose. It may start. It may be updating itself, and it's also becoming like like the evil. I mean, like really like. It's becoming like the board, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I mean, I have clients who, who, you know, they're like, oh no, we're gonna ask everyone to upload pictures holding our product on the Facebook page, and it's like, that's fine. Now you're taking time out of your schedule. I can't even get you to answer my phone calls, but now you have time for Facebook, and to, so you people are uploading pictures of your products. So what? I mean, I've seen some great integrations on Facebook. Probably my favorite is on the Ben & Jerry's website. You can like an individual flavor. It sends a picture of that flavor to your fan page and says, I'm a fan of, in my case, coffee, coffee, buzz, 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 because there is no other flavor that's worth even trying. <laughs> and then everybody looks at it and goes, oh my god, I wonder if my flavor is on Ben & Jerry's. Could they have been so foresightful? Of course they have. So you go and you do the same thing. And meanwhile, everybody's visiting the Ben & Jerry's site and they're thinking about Ben & Jerry's and they're all going out that night and as a nation, we all gain 10 cholesterol points. So I mean, I've seen that, that's a great integration. I mean, I think what is really powerful about Facebook that's totally underutilized and utilized in the wrong way is uh, the new, um, the, the new uh, open graph. So that's this new technology when they switch. I mean, it kind of got minimized in the whole talk about when we switch from fan pages to liking things. Part of that integration was something called Open Graph. And what Open Graph allowed you to do was to treat every single item on the web as an individual object that you can like and it will automatically, I don't know that word, automatically form a fan page on Facebook for that product, not you, for that product. And you can embed all kinds of incredible information right on your page, your website, not your Facebook page. It says, Make this person, when this page is formed, make this person the administrator, show this image. So I mean, basically, it took away the need for Facebook apps, which were impossible, I mean, you know, you had to pay somebody a lot of money to do a Facebook app, and now it's like 800 times easier. And WordPress has Facebook plugins that utilize Open Graph. Any other questions? Can you talk about how you deal with those iterative websites where if I hear monitoring people's metrics, just from like a client service perspective, how do you wait? How do you wait? Say it one more time. Like, how do you structure your client engagement so that you keep watching their metrics and making oh okay iterative changes? I know that I just keep the Google and I mean I, I get permission, so I have them own Google Analytics, and then they just authorize my Google account on their analytics account, so that when I log into Google Analytics, I see the whole shebang. I see all of it. And then I, I watch it. I mean, I have on my phone, I have it coming via RSS stream. I mean, I'm, I'm watching 800 things all the time. I've got, what do I have? I've got 
in my reader, I have RSS streams of, of every keyword I should be watching on Twitter and Facebook, and you know, Google Analytics is coming, or you know, Google Alerts is coming in via RSS. I can check it all from my phone, and I actually have an alarm that goes off four times a day to remind me to do so, because otherwise I would completely ignore it. So, I mean, I, I, I mean, if, if that's your job to watch, that's how I do it. I guess it's more just like from a client um, relationship perspective. How do you deal with like, oh, this page I made for you isn't working well? Like now I'm just maybe honest. Make a new one. People don't hire me because I'm nice. I'm just honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> but I am fun to sit next to, I'm just saying. Um, no, seriously, I mean, I, I think that's really, well, let me put it this way. People hire people for various different reasons, but if they're coming to me, it's generally they accept who I, I mean, you know, that's that's the joy of a freelancer, yeah. you know, of a certain age. This, <laughs> here's the package. <laughs> it is what it is what it is. If you want honesty, that's what you'll get, you know? So, I mean, I think it's very, I think clients love it when they hear, look, I did something for you, and it's not working, and I'm going to fix it, you know? That's completely legitimate. And how do you know, I mean, uh, how do you know if it's going to work until you test it? There's just no way to know. And I'm very upfront with clients, like, this is the cost of the website, and if you intend to test it, here's ongoing, you know, retainer, and this is what I'm going to do for you, and here's why you want it, and they want to see that result. I mean, frankly, if it were all sunshine and roses, we'd all be out of business real fast, right? They'd be like, well, I clearly don't need you anymore. You built me the best website ever. <laughs> Right? So I mean, I, I think, you know, look, our industry, and by that I mean web design, development, whatever the hell you want to call it, is, is like, I call it, you know, it's an industry full of snake oil salesmen. Raise your hand if you had somebody come to you and go, my last web designer disappeared on me and I can't get a hold of him. I even checked the box store and he wasn't there. <laughs> like, right? Everybody has a story like that. There's no regulating body. There's no certification body. Frankly, I think it sucks. You know, on one hand, it makes people better clients by the time they end up with me, but their trust has been completely deteriorated because every single person I know has been screwed, mm -hmm. usually more than once. The saying I have is 99% uh, of the web designers that are rude and flaky uh, and irresponsible give the other 1% back name. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I'm rude, but I'm effective, so whatever. But yeah, I mean, but it's, it's, it's true, you know, the point is that, right, I mean, I think that there's a way to present yourself professionally and, you know, People want to hear the truth. I think people want to see ROI. I mean, now I mean, the whole point of this is that you're now talking about providing ROI on a website, not just a pretty design or great backend development. And I'm not saying that none of those are important. They're all important. I'm just saying that this is the thing that I feel like 90% of people overlook. You know, like here, this will be great. This will spin, and we're going to use this. I saw this palette, and it's going to be beautiful. And you know, we're going to make it do this dynamic database backend. Great. And how effective will all that be? So how can I show a client ROI? Because in the end, that's all they give a rat's ass about, and rightly so. Yeah. Can you talk about what testing you do, uh, what tools, how much of it is AB versus multivariate? Uh, I don't think multivariate works. I think you got to do AB because, frankly, I'm not that intelligent, and I need a limited set of variables. So I like AB testing. And I mean, I think what we know is that like short run testing very limited, you know, like a week at most, like one tiny little aspect on a page, I change buttons, I change widgets, and then I measure it, and I just try to pay attention if there's some external factor. And Mitchko is, has this plugin that he's been... Is it out yet? I saw a demo of it. It didn't work well, when I got home, but, but someone, else used it, someone else used it later and said that it worked, and they, they tested the effectiveness so of So Mitchell is effectively buttons. the smartest man any of us have ever met. And uh, I always get him to, you know, he, he's, he's local and he writes plugins. He wrote the yet another really proposed plugin. And he told me like a month ago that he was working on a secret A-B testing plugin for uh, Google Summer of Code. So clearly it's in the beta stage, but yeah. Mitcho is about beta testing more than anybody else I know. So it's probably going through a very rich testing process. Mm -hmm. But at some point there will be an A-B testing plugin for WordPress produced by Mitchell, who has a real name, but prefers to go like that. And it's really easy to set up from the demo he did. If it, well, we would certainly help yeah. that <laughs> Right. <laughs> and so Google Analytics, I think, is honestly just fine. I actually had this like whole conversation, right? Because a yeah, while ago... You use that for uh, uh, AD testing? Yeah, I use it for everything. Why not? I had this whole internal conversation about three or four months ago when they decided that people could opt out of Google Analytics. And I was like, well, now it's no good because people can opt out, so it's skewed results, and like, we're gonna have to find another something, whatever. And actually, Mitchell, of all people, he, we were sitting at a dinner, and he goes, 
Yeah, and like the people in the foil hats are coming after you too. <laughs> so I mean, it's really how many people are opting out of Google Analytics? You know, so it's it's fine. I'm sure Google made it really easy to do so. Of course. <laughs> Only 17 steps. What? It's only 17 steps. <laughs> <laughs> it's something else, yeah. Uh, how important uh, is it, do you think, to have a, a mobile version of, of its site? Well, it depends. Do you ever plan on your site being viewed by a cell phone? <laughs> if, okay. you have, if you have a blog, let's say. <laughs> I was being totally suspicious. <laughs> of course, it's important because everyone is going to view your site. I mean, yeah, it's great that, that cell phones now see websites as they should be. That's great, but. I mean, it's also ridiculous because, you know, it's not the ideal way to view it on a cell phone. So I like mobile themes. Uh, what do I use? Uh, WP Mobile Pack, I think it's called. Um, because, 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 because it has a switcher at the bottom of the page. So if you go, well, this is stupid, I want to see the flash, you can click it on the bottom and it goes back to the whole page. To like the whole website. And it remembers you so that you never have to do it again. But you could just go to the bottom and go switch back to mobile. And you can design those themes. Although they do come in nifty four colors. It's like the same horrible, boring gradient theme, but you can get it in red, blue, or green if gray doesn't do it for you. Anybody else? I'm actually working on a site right now that involves more all over the homepage. Really? For real, yeah. My battery's dead. That just sucks. <laughs> that would be awesome. I would love to see that site later. Could you perhaps get the giraffes to talk and walk across? <laughs> I mean, there was a time, I mean, I had a website years ago that had butterflies and grass. We had two beetles doing matrix style fighting. I mean, it was awesome. It really was pretty freaking awesome. But I mean, like, you just don't do it, right? You know, stuff. Yeah. And the, the giraffe might have, like, a text bubble that has submissions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you <they> talk. <laughs> Well, clearly it is in its own and special draft language. Yeah, it's on Twitter. Yeah, and it's on Twitter. If you had a website for a movie, for example, I mean, that's the kind of splash list that you wanted from the beginning. Right, because consider who goes to movie websites. I have never actually been to a movie website, but I'm sure there are people who do, and what information do they want? They're teenage girls, I would assume, and you know, I, I don't know, but like, again, you consider your audience, what do they want to see? There's some people out there who want Flash games. I'm not saying that Muppets.com should get rid of their Flash, clearly, because I mean, they have this Swedish chef interpreter in Flash, <laughs> and it's really awesome. But do you know what I mean? Like, it needs to be audience specific. For that audience, that works. Anybody else? Well, it's been a joy and a privilege, and yeah. <clears throat>